So when it comes to patience, you have to be patient enough to let the market come to you. And I've been saying this ad nauseum, but the reason successful people such as doctors, lawyers, and automatic transmission mechanics, according to one of my clients who's a psychiatrist, is because they have to take whatever train wreck comes along. They can't sit around and wait for the perfect client. And that's hard to be a person of action and then come into a business where a lot of what you need to do is inaction. And then you also need a lot of patience for the market to move once you're in the trade. Livermore once said, it was never my thinking that made the big money. It was always, it always was the sitting. Money is made by sitting, not trading. And it depends on where you are in reminiscence of a stock operator. But some of it's sitting is waiting for conditions to improve. And some of it's sitting is letting a trade unfold. Don't give me timing. Give me time. Once you start quoting Livermore, it's hard to stop. A man may see straight and clearly and yet become impatient or doubtful when the market takes its time about doing as he figured it must do. ARLP, I think I have that one in here. Even CPE took a while. Simar took a while. That GHVI, okay, cash in the kids college fund, is taking its own sweet time about doing what I think it should. Luckily for me, I put that one on my trading service and I'm not going to micromanage myself out because six months from now, when it finally does stop out, I'm just kind of being a little hopeful. I could show you, hey, you know what? Here is the trade right here. Here's the actual trade I made, at least in a model account, okay, where I did follow the plan to a T. The market does not beat them. They beat themselves because though they have brains, they cannot sit tight. That's kind of alluding to the fact that smarter you are, the harder it is. Hard, hard for you to sit tight in a position. And last week at Bandcamp, again, I think in my stock chart show, Thinking Like a Trader Part 3, I found an old slide in going through that old stuff where we had a stock that we were stuck in for a month and it was losing for a complete month, maybe it was 22 days or 23 days, which is 20 something trading, you know, 21 trading days, I think, or 20 trading days, right around a month or so. But this one was over a month where it flat out didn't work, was actually losing. And then all of a sudden it took off. And the day before it took off, when it, when it had a little bit of a fake out first, remember markets will often do the obvious in an unobvious manner, and they'll often do what they have to do to fool the most amount of people. And I borrowed that from Linda Rasky, and she said she got it off the floor somewhere. She doesn't know where she got it. But they beat themselves because they have brains. Though they have brains, they cannot sit tight. So here's the ARLP example. And a lot of you guys here tonight are in the service. Let me know if you got bored with this thing and exited it. And I won't beat you up or anything. I won't say your name out loud. Nobody can see your name. But I'd be willing to bet that some of you probably got out. So this was a buy. And we waited and waited and waited and waited for it to trigger. And then it finally triggered. And then it starts pulling back for days and days and days. And like, now on a chart, that doesn't look like much, right? Well, that's almost three weeks of sitting in this thing, watching your profits erode. And then what happened? Took off again and then went sideways and sideways and sideways. And it was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then, as you can see, it finally took off again. Knock on wood. And so far, so good. It's doing okay. And hopefully a year from now we're still in this and even though we've been this thing what since the beginning of the year so round numbers that's what about six months or so six and a half months if you look at where the price is now and where the price was 
that's a pretty good return for an entire year. So annualize, even though you waited and waited and waited, it was very painful, it eventually paid off. Now, this is not to say throw caution to the wind and stick with positions forever. Stick with positions until stopped out. And sometimes that might mean sticking with a position forever, or at least months and sometimes even years, okay? If you get stopped out, you get stopped out. So be it. Just like that little bank stock. I forget how many months I was in that, but I was in that forever. It did well forever. And then finally it stopped out. So I'm in ARLP, been it, been in it forever. And I'm trying to think which one it is. It might be the CPE, but there was at least one of them in the current portfolio that we opened up at least a year ago. So just because I'm a trader, even though I do probably do a little too much day trading, admittedly. As my wife says, he does a lot of day trading. <laughs> I'm not like the rat hitting the cocaine button all day long. I'm willing to sit in these things and wait and wait and wait and wait. And it's pretty easy to wait and wait and wait and wait when I throw this trade out for you guys too. And I, it's almost like, okay, well, I've got to practice what I preach and I have to follow my plan. And many times, many times I come in, especially lately, and I'm getting whacked really hard. And I'm like, damn it, I should just get out of this stock. And then I look at my service spreadsheet and I see the stop is, is another three points away. And I'm going like, oh my God, I'm stuck in this stock. I don't feel like letting it go three points, but I just follow along. And not every time, not all the time, obviously. And other ones never see my fat ass again things. But many times, especially lately, these things eventually take off again, and I'm pleasantly surprised. So again, trade at a really small size until you get your patience. Keep in mind that the market rarely moves in your time frame and to your expectations. And we put a lot of expectations on ourselves. We can give ourselves the gift of time. I'm very impatient, okay? So this is really hard. For me, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, just follow along like the Grand Booba. You know, it's tough for me. And I think it's tough for most people because I think we, as I've said a thousand times, we, whether we want to admit it or not, we pretty much have a shared psychology when it comes to our feelings towards the market. And we definitely have a shared neurology, okay? A loss hurts emotionally twice as much as a gain feels good, as I said before. And in reading that investor's brain book, I think it was this morning or yesterday, they said that people with a certain gambling addiction, they feel that pain even more than the two times that, uh, what's his name, Tversky and Kannerman talk about in Thinking Fast and Slow and in other writings by them. Now, one thing you could do to give yourself some patience is to use a hard order and turn off your screen. Or I would suggest if you're a little bit more advanced, put in an alert and forget about it. And I know easier said than done, but I have some stocks. I, I, I am guilty of watching my equity way too much. I have one screen, one big screen dedicated just to equity. And that's just because it's a lot easier for me just to see where everything is and then act accordingly. But I do have accounts that are just browsers. I don't even have the trading platform loaded. And in those accounts, it's a lot easier to follow along because I'm not staring at the ups and downs all day, okay? So you, you look at something, you're down four or five points and you're like, oh my God, and you see how much money you're losing. And then you come back at the end of the day and, and not all the time, but sometimes that loss is erased and you might even have a gain. Well, if you just come in at the end of the day and look at it and make fewer observations is what I'm trying to say, then your life is a lot easier and it's a lot easier to be patient. We're also people of action. And, and when you're looking at that equity going down the road and doing the day, even though it's nowhere near your stop, you are encouraged to do something and it's hard not to keep busy and that's why 
I keep busy. I, I'm working on, I'm like, it seems like, especially now, the stock charts presentations, for some reason, those seem to take me a long time to do. And I just work on them and work on them and work on them. And that keeps me from getting sucked into the zigs and zags and micromanaging. Now, one thing to remember is that patience and discipline does get used up and that's something that and i forget where i initially read that it, it might have been in part and uh what's his name's uh, dilbert sky robert uh, not robert but uh scott i think is his name uh, he talked a lot about energy management and how you a lot of your job is management of energy he's not talking about trading he's just talking about in general and you could use up a lot of energy if you're watching that screen too much. I know I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Okay. He does a lot of day trading. That's what I said. That's when we're in. We're talking to other people. But just remember that patience does get sort of used up. And if you don't believe me, have you ever had a child kind of aggravate you, aggravate you, aggravate you, aggravate you, and all of a sudden they do one little thing and then you snap? And then sometimes, unfortunately, it happens with a spouse. That's because your patience got used up. Now you know why that happens, and now you're just going to figure out how you're going to manage that. Commit to commitment devices. I was talking with a guy I talk with quite often, and he told me his latest commitment device. And I'm like, you've got to keep doing that so I can continue to talk about you and the chart shows. Well, as I've said before, he has his office assistant and i'll get the name wrong the the title wrong but it's it's a like the person who runs the office okay not not just an assistant she would he would hand his phone off to her and, and she would change his password after about an hour of trading and he would get busy and go back to work well i don't know if they're not in the same office anymore or, or whatever but what he does now is she has the app on his phone on wait he has the app on his phone obviously because he's trading off his phone and she has the app on her phone and she has access to his account he trusts her that much and about an hour into the day she sends him a text okay it's it's coming and that reminds him to stop trading because he, he likes to do a little scalping type of trading and, and that's mostly pretty good trading for that type of trading usually early in the morning and so she texts him and she changes his password after she sends a text so that shuts him down on trading for the day now, that's a pretty serious commitment device but that's a that's a great thing if you're willing to commit to some sort of commitment device I mean my commitment device at least with the service stocks is that I want to show that I rode that trend for 500% or 700% or whatever the case may be. So I know that I have to stay in the stock that long. 